boring week. It was like that sort of kidney operation I've had. Um, it's just affected my life in a big way. How are you now, Carly? You feeling better? Uh, better, better than it was last week. Because last week you really were not putting the effort in, were you? And it's your own fault, you know, you've got kidney stones, you don't drink enough water. I yeah, no, well, that's, that's what I've been doing this week, just drinking, that's, I mean, you, you said what, what sort of week have you had, what have you been up to, that's what I've done, I've drank water. <laughs> that's all I've been doing. <laughs> if there's a water shortage in London, <laughs> it's because of that. <laughs> Honestly, just, that's what you have to do, Can't, it's sort of, it's just boring. It's like a, a basking shark, it's sort of. <laughs> With his mouth open, just going through the water. Oh, Sick of it. Oh, he's led the life of plankton for have one you, week. Have you been able to do anything, or have you just been resting? Uh, it's best to rest, um, just because, you know, your body's still in shock, even though in the head, physically, I thought it was all right. Uh, the body sort of just acts in weird ways. Brilliant. Um, you know, it's a weird thing, isn't it? Like I said last week, you, you don't think about your body until there's something up with it. And then you panic a bit. And then you go, right, I'm going to look after it from now on. I've been given a second chance here. Uh, as I said before, this was not a life-threatening illness or operation. No, but it's, it's that same thing. The last time I had it was when I nearly choked to death on the Mr. Freeze pop. Right. Where I had that sort of, uh, what do they call it when you have like a second coming? Do you know what I mean? It's that sort of thing where <laughs> I you I don't go, think you're the second coming. No, but that, that thing goes... If you are, we're all screwed. That, you mean the second chance? Yeah, it's, it's, it's a second chance. Thing where, your life flashes before you, doesn't it? Yeah, but you get a... Uh, you suddenly feel kinder. Do you know what I mean? You, really? You, yeah, you sort of go, right, you know, that was a bit of a warning. Be like good, Scrooge? Be good for people and stuff. Yeah, a little bit. I think it's normal. So are you now a nicer person? You're giving more generously to charity and the like? Uh, well, they haven't been out, so I can't do anything. I can't help anyone. Yeah. Go online. And but maybe, uh, you know, one Don't some money, all this cash you're in. No, I've given enough money away. Sick of it. But, um... Oh, things have changed. So he hasn't changed at all then, no. But you've also got to be careful as well, because there's that thing of, you can drown yourself uh, by having too much water. Yeah. Mm. So it's just getting that balance right of not having too much and filling yourself up. Mm. Uh, well, yeah, it's that balance, right, of uh, not uh, dehydrating and, uh, you know, be becoming like a, a desert jellyfish, like a little crisp, and drowning yourself. Yeah. You're right, it is a balance. That's exactly what you've got to I do. I don't know how you've managed it, Carl. It's very complicated. Yeah. No, but... I what I do is I, um, when I'm thirsty, I drink, and when I'm not thirsty, I don't. Yeah, but the, that's the problem with me. Uh, whatever it is that's in your head that says you should have a drink, I don't really have one. <laughs> it's called a brain. It's called a brain. Yeah. It's the brain that tells you. <laughs> but the brain's never thirsty. I only think of drinking when I'm eating, and I'm not eating as much because my kidney's weird. I don't want to put any pressure on it, so I don't drink. So now, if I have it in front of me all the time, I go, right, I've got to have that. <laughs> so yeah, so I feel, you know, feel a bit better. Good. Just, uh, it's just been a long week because when you when you don't do much. It's just, you know, time doesn't whiz by. And normally your weeks are packed, as we know, with yeah. visits to the cobbler. And yeah. So. Well, it's just, like they say, isn't it? They say, uh... Following, following an ant. <laughs> exactly, yeah. You've only got a hectic schedule. I know, but, I don't know how you fit it all in. But, you know, because I was close to death and everything... <laughs> you weren't close to death! I, I've been thinking about, uh, you know, other people who've been in that situation where they're dying and what have you. And it's weird how, like, in a way... Do you know, like they say, before you die, things to do... Yeah. I I, I've never heard best. that sentence before. I don't know if they say. Well, I've extrapolated from that. What you mean is there are certain things you should do before you die. Swim with dolphins, etc. Yeah. But in a way, because I've had such a boring week, it's been a long week. So if I was dying, don't go swim with dolphins because you'll love it and the time will whiz by and you go, oh, there's another day gone. Whereas I've been sat at home watching, you know, The Price is Right and stuff. <laughs> and it's just like, oh, it's only four o'clock. <laughs> oh, this is dragging. So if I was dying, I'd go... Yeah, it's dragging, but I've got ages more left to live. Yeah, what's the point? But it's really about quality of existence, isn't it, when you're dying? No, but anyway, I'm just saying. Oh, OK. <laughs> been a boring week. But what I've been doing is going on the internet, oh, sort of learning stuff, of watching more documentaries about stuff. Yeah. Uh, OK, tell me something you watched on the internet, then. Uh, the thing that stands out the most, uh, there's this spider. Right. That a fella got. Um, popped it in like a little sort of bottle yeah. and uh, chucked in 80 ants and the spider right, just went mental 
And, uh, I don't know if, do spiders eat ants? I don't know, I don't know if they do, uh, but, uh, he wasn't happy with them, that they were there. And he was just whizzing around, um, sort of biting them. Not eating them, just giving them a bite, and the ants would sort of just lie there, dead. Mm-hmm. And, uh, the spider had this system of sort of going, right, I'm gonna put the dead ones over there. And he was biting them, dragging them across, putting them in a pile, killing another one, popping it in the pile. And by the end of it, he made like a little pile of dead ants, and he was just there sort of breathing heavily. And that, that, that was amazing, because I'd never witnessed that before. <laughs> But you don't see that happening, do you, normally? So you think that if people are unfortunately passing away, sort of visiting Disneyland or whatever, they should they should just learn stuff. Just sure, make, get on the internet and this, watch this spiders. This world is amazing. Attacking ants. Um, and just that thing of you know, you, last week you were saying how good ants were and how they brainy and they work hard and everything. Yet none of them sort of they didn't know what they were doing. There's panic going on. <laughs> <laughs> You watched them again, they were running backwards and forwards, and I, I remember, like, seeing a program about ants where um, they meant to sort of work together as a team, yeah. and if they climb up a person's leg, um, that person stood on their house, say, yeah. and they're all like, oh. There's um, a signal, and they all bite at the same time. They all bite once. Now, yeah. if that had done that on that spider, yeah. they sort of all go on it, and when they're all in position, one of them sort of goes, no, and it bites... Yeah. And then it would it would do some damage, but there was none of that. Mm. And but you've seen things like the Towering Inferno, where even humans panic crazily and jump out of windows and things until Steve McQueen comes along and saves the day. So yeah, but you, at the end of the day, when you're in a Towering Inferno, you were there relaxing on holiday. So of course you're going to be relaxed, and it's the shock of it's going to make you go, oh, I wasn't ready for that. I was sat here in my trunks. <laughs> where's <laughs> sure. where's that ant? Ants should always be alert. Well, yeah. Any insect life should always be... Well, so for a human scooping up uh, 80 of them and putting them in a bottle with a giant spider. Yeah, but I'm just saying that's what insects do. Um, their life, they never relax. That's what's weird with an insect. There's no f- downtime, is there? <laughs> it's you wake up, you go and get the food, you build your house. That's what you do, so you're always alert. They shouldn't be sort of running around going, oh, what do we do now? That should be that should be in them. I love that you're annoyed at these poor yeah. ants that were bitten to death. But also, they say they're clever. I was looking at it. If I was an ant, I would have just crawled under the pile of dead ones. <laughs> just sit under there, wait for the spider to go. None of them were doing that. They were all staying on one side and the dead ones on the other. So I'm just saying, I'm just saying that you know you're always sticking up for insects, saying they know what they're doing. They don't. Uh, uh, what, 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 <laughs> yeah. Where's this come from? When have I ever stuck up for insects? It's you that's follow them, saying, saying they're brilliant and that, and ladybirds are right-handed and Christ knows what. No, but you know, so I'd learned that. Brilliant. Um, you haven't learned anything. There's nothing to learn from that. There's nothing you learned from uh, that. Something about um, jellyfish uh, and uh, what else was there? There was this fella, there was a programme on the telly about survival. Um, and a fella who, uh, he, he looks after elephants. And he's in this little hang glider, looking for an elephant that he's looking after. He has to keep a track on where it's going and all that. And one day he's saying, oh, I haven't seen the elephant today. And the fella's like, well, look, look for it tomorrow. He's like, no, it's best if I go and look for it now. Because it might go further away or something. He said, oh, I wish you'd leave it. You know, till tomorrow. So straight away you're going, oh, this is trouble. So he's going out in his glider, sort of at night. Uh, he's looking I for. I doubt it's a glider. I imagine well, like it's, a, a, it's a glider with an engine. It's one of a the light old. aircraft then. Yeah. So he, he gets in that on his own. He's wandering about in the air, looking down. Um, like I say, it's loads of land. He's looking for one elephant. He's not having much luck. Anyway, I think he gets to a point when he goes, oh, I'm having no luck. I might as well go home. Goes to turn round. Something happens. The glider falls to the floor, crashes. Light, light aircraft. Light aircraft yeah. Yeah. That crashes. He gets out. He's broke his legs. Um, done his back in. Um, hurt his hands. I mean, he's in a bad way. And uh, he looks at the plane, and that's uh, that's a wreck. Petrol's coming out of it. He's thinking that's not going to fly again. And... Uh, he has to lie there, doesn't he, for like 48 hours or something. And in that time, everything's being chucked at him. He has a, a lion wandering around him. A scorpion walks over his leg. 
some sort of dangerous snake went in his shoe. <laughs> yeah. uh, what else is there out there? Some sort of bad ants. Um, just everything that's there that could cause a problem. Mm. He had it all in his life. I, I, uh, I haven't seen this, but I suspect there's a lot of conjecture <laughs> yeah. in this telling of <laughs> it. Bad, bad ants. Bad ants. No, just <laughs> anything that you could think of mm. that's out there to cause you a bit of a problem. Camels. He got hot. He got so hot his lips fell off. <laughs> <laughs> no, because you have to have a lot of juice to keep your lips sort of how they are. Right. Uh, so that's the sort of state he was in. Yeah. 48 hours. And yet he survived in the end. Someone came and found him. And, and you that, thought that you were bored in. doing nothing? Yeah, no. Well, he didn't even have the internet. Yeah, but he had a lot of insects. What would you watch. do then if you land? If you landed, right? Supposing uh, we all land, right? We're shipwrecked. Okay, there's no food around, um, but there's a chance we might be saved, like in a few days. We just got to stay alive just for a few days, okay? Mm. Um, Steve offers up. His penis. For what purpose? Well, it's it's already you've torn it in the car in the uh, plane crash anyway. It's just hanging off. You go, okay, listen, lads, let's eat this. Let's go. This will go three ways. I should be so lucky. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fine, yeah. I'll look for something else. <laughs> Because we're surrounded by water. Why are we eating knob? There's loads of fish and everything. There's more fish in the sea than there is stuff on land. <gasps> that, that was something else that I've read about, about how there's more sea life happening. There's loads more. What stuff. do you mean? Than what? Um, than stuff happening on land. Well, yeah, it's a bigger place, isn't it? Yeah, and there's more... It's, they're all coming further in because it's getting so crowded. Everything's uh, being pushed outwards. So we, we're going to get to a point where people won't go walking in the sea because there'll be something deadly just floating about on the on near the shore. Again, that's no information at all. <laughs> I don't know. There's yet. no information in that statement at all. Yeah, I said I said how the sea is so overcrowded that everything's being pushed to the edge. It's not overcrowded. It is. What's been? You mean things that are in the sea are being pushed to the edge of the yeah, sea? Yeah, because there's new stuff happening all the time. There's new creatures being made, they're changing quickly. They were saying how, like, I don't know, 50 years ago, jellyfish didn't even have a have a sting. That's rubbish. Try 50 million and you'll get closer to the truth. But, but what I mean is, in terms of, like, land, we all look the same, don't we? We've had two legs and two arms for ages. Whereas in the sea, things are changing at a, a really fast rate. So, like, jellyfish we're knocking about. The sea is a much more stable environment than the land anyway. What are you on about? Well, I'd have thought... I wouldn't have thought evolution is any any faster in the sea than land. Yeah, it is. Well, no, what, what's, what's the evidence for this? Well, I'm telling you now. I'm telling you how jellyfish have changed. And look at them. And how they. have they changed then? So they didn't, 50 years ago they didn't have a sting. Yeah. Now they have. Yeah. Trilbies. They wore trilbies 50 years ago as <laughs> yeah. well. And they just spoke with a much more, you know, <laughs> refined <laughs> accent. Yeah. Just that, that is quite a lot though, isn't it? Because jellyfish are nothing. But like no, you've made that up. That's not a fact. There's, there's no facts come out of this. That's not, not, oh, that's interesting. That you haven't said anything. Jellyfish oh. are, haven't changed in 50 years. No, they have. They've changed a, a lot in terms of... Well, they haven't changed in hundreds of millions of years, so I don't know what the 60s had to do with anything. I don't. I, I just don't know what what influence the Beatles and Mary Quan suddenly had on jellyfish when they because hadn't changed for hundreds of all millions this, of years. With all this sort of loose, free sex, you know, free love, <laughs> yeah. they were just going berserk. I know, yeah. There were no inhibitions yeah. amongst the jellyfish anymore. Things are, are changing a lot. To think that jellyfish, when they, were, when they first came out, they were nothing. Jellyfish are, are nothing, aren't they? They're just a blob. <laughs> so when they first came out, when they were first released, and, new and, by Ron Bell. <laughs> yeah. uh, but what I'm saying is, even though they were nothing, they've grown to have a bit of something, <laughs> just to get by in a busy place. Which I is don't know what you're talking about. It's it, all uh, guesswork and it's conjecture. It's not guesswork. I've been it's up all all week. I've been reading all this and watching stuff. Carl, you haven't what? learned anything. Mm. Well, that's not entirely true because he's obviously. Learned enough to have written a poem about some of these subjects. Oh, I love his poems. Are you getting into poetry now, properly? I really like it, yeah. Um, is Carl going to read this for me, Steve? If you want him to. I think so. I did one about my kidneys. What was it called? Uh, didn't have a name, it doesn't need it. 
Ode uh, to a Nephron. Right, I did two about jellyfish. Excellent. Uh, I don't like jellyfish. They're not a fish, they're just a blob. They don't have eyes, fins or scales like a cod. They float about blind, stinging people in the seas, and no one eats jellyfish with chips and mushy peas. <laughs> Get rid of them. <laughs> and then there's just a shorter one about a jellyfish. Um, it would be spiteful to put jellyfish in a trifle. This, yeah, 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 yeah. That's yeah, a yeah. really good poem. It would be spiteful to put jellyfish in a trifle. Yeah. A little half rhyme. Yeah. Um, do you want the one about my kidneys? Yeah. Uh, for God's sake, my belly ache. The doctor said it's my kidney. He said he's got a stick of tube up my knob. I said, you got to be kidding me. <laughs> for God's sake, knob ache. <laughs> I'm sort of mildly disappointed that they're quite good. Yeah, yeah. No poet's ever written about jellyfish and kidneys. It's great. Oh, God, I think you might have the market sewn up there. <laughs> it, is, it would be spiteful to put a jellyfish in a trifle. I mean, I'm, I'm both impressed and fascinated and worried by Carl's new literary outlook yeah. you know we, we've said to him we've we've tried to make him appreciate the arts and poetry and and uh, you know uh, you know explaining like what metaphor does and and symbolism and all that but i'm worried it will backfire because what if he becomes clever and erudite and then we lose our little endless well of stupidity what mm. if we lose our little shaved monkey i mean these podcasts without you know it's almost like he were evolving into a human I mean, you've actually, you've authored a book. Well, I have to say, I mean, without, at the risk of sounding like we're shamelessly promoting it, I've only just looked at the book today, because that's the first time I've seen it, The World of Carl Pilkington, and uh, I was very impressed by how legitimate it feels. I mean, it does feel like an actual well, book. he's put so much work into it. I it, mean, he... He's I done mean, drawings, he's done extra thoughts and ideas, and it's very odd to think that that has probably gone now into the British Library, which I think is obligated to take a copy of every book published. Incredible. I but, mean, let's be honest, it's not going to really... It's not going to be on anyone's bookshelf. It'll be on their lavatory cistern, possibly next to their bed. But nevertheless, you know, it's hardback and it's got pages. It's a real book. Yeah. Will you uh, now read some some great works? Will you read poetry at all? Or? Um, probably not. A bit, I don't like reading made-up stories because Fiction. life's life's interesting enough, isn't it? Right. If I'm going to read someone else's lies, I might as well make some of my own up and save me money, is what right. I mean. But you do read um, lies and made-up things, you just take them as the truth. Um, Most of the spurious facts and apocryphal tales and ridiculous stories that you read on the internet are, I mean, fiction. Yeah, but as long as it gets you thinking, then it really doesn't matter. Say, like, you know, I was telling you about the sea being full up, yeah. right? Yeah how there's too many fish in it and they're all being pushed out. Then, um, you know, it was saying about how the jellyfish is changing yeah. from a bit back just being a blob to now being a blob with stingy bits. You go, oh. And then... No, I don't. I think I wonder what he read. And I then, what he was reading then I'll think of what other things are in the sea. How are they changing? And then that's when I might do a poem about an octopus with two heads. Because it's, it's got me thinking. So no longer am I just reading someone else's story, spending a full week reading some other story. I've read a little paragraph, and that's got me thinking. About and it's an inspired you to make great art. With uh, an octopus with two heads. And you just think, yeah, that would work. You know, that's a good good way for them to evolve. They've got all the arms. Give them two heads. <laughs> They've got all the arms. And, you know... It would work, because like I've said to you before, it is one big head to make it two smaller heads. 
So it's just looking at science, looking at how things can move. It's not on. looking at but science. But it's not looking at science. You then speculating on, a, on an octopus having two heads is of no value, is it, to anyone or anything? But there's people out there who are bringing out books who are writing stuff like that for sci-fi stuff. And I think, why am I reading that? that's entertainment. Everyone knows it's not true. They're doing it to... But they do more than just say, what would it, wouldn't it be great if there was a, if there was an octopus with two heads? They then paint a world in which this octopus exists I and presumably causes some kind of narrative interest. I can do that on my own though. Without. So know, what's the story of the octopus with two heads? It's happier in the end. Everyone likes happy ending. He's got company. But if that's not a story, Carl. What? What? Th tell us the story. What, you made up a story about an octopus with two heads? No, I'm just saying. I've I've pitched I've thought about how the sea's changing. Mm. Right, what else is in the sea? Octopus. Right. What's an octopus like? Well it's just a big head with a load of arms. Right. How would I change that? <laughs> <laughs> I love this thought process. But it's not a story. This is not a story. It's not anything. It's just some thoughts you've had. It's not well, a your story a story is there to make you think and, and have thoughts. But what is it that you've thought? You've not... I don't see what, what you've thought here. I've just thought, yeah, that'd be all right. <laughs> I know, but... Well, like, like King Kong, then. That's only someone who's gone, oh, monkeys are getting better at stuff. Yes, but it has a story, doesn't it? They go in search... No, it isn't. It isn't saying monkeys are getting better at stuff. <laughs> that's not what it's saying. There's lots of themes, but that's not one of them. Monkeys anyway. are getting better at stuff. <laughs> no, they're getting yeah. better at stuff, the way they try to sort of... He tried to go out with a woman... <laughs> That's them moving on, isn't it? It's the monkey going, do you know what? I quite fancy her. And you know from the beginning, I mean, that is a story that you go, well, that relationship ain't going to work. <laughs> <laughs> do you know what I mean? I don't, I, I mean, I've not gone out with women who have quite fancied, but then they smoke, and you go, oh, that's enough to put me off. Yeah. So, when a monkey's that big, I wouldn't even, the thought wouldn't even pass my mind. <laughs> to go on a date. we could... This could work out. <laughs> Sometimes it's just, you know, relationships aren't made for each other. <laughs> now, that for a story, you, you, you wouldn't think it'd go past page one. <laughs> yet you're having a go at me because an octopus has got two heads. Which isn't that weird. When you look at them anyway, they, I mean, they must be the weirdest <laughs> thing knocking about on the planet. I'm not kidding you. I've never seen anything so weird. And yet... <laughs> he's angry because he's not he's seen anything so weird as not to so happy. Well, it's not yet a story. What's weird about it? What's strange about an octopus with all the things that could... Why is it any weirder than a dog? Because it couldn't be further away from us. A dog has got human eyes. <laughs> <laughs> if, if a jelly... Honestly, if a jellyfish had a pair of eyes like ours, I probably wouldn't worry about him that much. But, like I said to you, it's that way that they haven't got eyes, they're floating about. I can handle some fish. They look, they look like, because they've got eyes, you can make eye-to-eye -eye contact with them. <laughs> what are you a jellyfish, what are you looking at? It's a snidey thing, like I've said to you. <laughs> you can see, see a lot in eyes. Do you know what I mean? They say, I don't trust him. Why? It's his eyes. Jellyfish haven't even got any, and I don't trust them. <laughs> Whereas if it had them, maybe they'd be the odd one that I'd go, oh, that one's all right. OK, Carl, I'm just going to throw an animal at you. Tell me how weird it is, what bits annoy you, how you change it, OK? A crab. How would I change it? Yeah. Does it annoy you? Do you think it's weird? Um, they are weird. <laughs> but they're at that size where they can get away with it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it suits them. Okay, um, good. Would I, would I change anything? Um, in a way, you know, what you're saying about things not working, he can't walk forwards. So uh, why hasn't something happened? Why haven't they said, you know what, these arms are too clumsy. We need to have them so they can slot away easier and we can pull them out when we need them. And so they're <laughs> clumping around with them. Because they do struggle. You see them struggling with their arms. Yeah, they're still here. They're still doing that. They're still designed that way. <laughs> What's the weirdest animal? So you think the octopus is the weirdest animal on Earth? Yeah. In terms of um, design and everything, and uh, if you lined everything up, say if I'd come from another planet yeah. and everything was lined up in a row and they said, right, we're going to give you a crash course in what's knocking about on this planet. Yeah. And you go, right, go on then. And you go, this is man, here's a woman, here's a dog, here's a cat. Here's an octopus, here's a... I go, hang on a minute, what is this? 
That jingle, of course, signifies another reading from Carl Pilkington's diary. There was an animal in the paper today that I've never before seen. It's called an alpaca. They are gormless looking. The fellow who breeds them said they are easy to look after because they're used to harsh conditions because they normally live in the mountains. The problem with this is they will turn useless eventually, and then if we try to bung it back on the Andes, they won't like it. It's like how people win these live like a star for a week competitions. They're not good for anyone. <laughs> okay. Do you know what I mean? If something's living somewhere, but he's not going to send them back to the back? Andes. He's presumably breeding them for something else. Yeah, but say if eventually, you know, the world's getting busy, there's hardly any room, and we go right. What can we shift here? What's getting in our way that we can shift? <laughs> well, those funny-looking things came from the Andes. Bung them back. All right, then let's put them back. And they go. Oh, they don't like it. They're not surviving. They're dying out. Why did we bring them here? Oh, it was closer. Yeah, but look, we've died out now of the... Sorry, this is not this is yourself. Not all scenarios. This, this isn't happening. They're, they're angry about it, like it just happened and you're sick of it. None of this has happened no, yet. I'm just looking at how it will happen. <laughs> Leave them where they were. <laughs> but you're, like, you're getting angry about things that you're speculating on now. It's absurd, Carl. Not once have I read here about your anger about, about terrorism or international, you know... Political injustice. Not once have you written about that. <laughs> Only about the fact we may send animals back to the Andes. I know, but just because it, it just annoyed me. That's all. They brought them here. Some fellas getting a load of praise because they brought this weird animal into the country, and yet it's like, well, they were they were on the Andes for a reason. Leave them there. It was happier there. I, I mean, I feel guilty when I open a bag and a fly flies out of it, and I think. Where's that come from? What bag are you opening with bat flies? What bag? No, just when, like, you know, the bag I took the computer home in. A fly flew out of it, and I thought, when did that get in that bag? Where have I brought that from? And it's the same thing. It doesn't want to be somewhere else. It was where it was. And that's the same with this Palaco, or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Great news. Get $25 cash back on the purchase oh, you just God. made. It's now. amazing! Wow. It really is the ramblings of a madman, isn't it? <laughs> Some new sea thing has been found. <laughs> <laughs> There's no headlines on the news! <laughs> it wasn't found by sea experts, it was found on eBay. Someone was selling it for a fiver. I don't see the point in buying something that you don't know what it is. What do you I... mean? What do you mean? It was... It was. Someone's found some sort of shell with a thing living in it. Right. Um... They thought, oh, I've never seen one of these before. I can flog it on eBay. Someone bought it and then wanted to look after it, went to some sea expert, and they said, oh, I don't know what that is. That's 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 the story. He's just Great weird how now you can stuff's been found on eBay. No, it wasn't found on eBay, though, was it? Purchase. Yeah, but that's where the specialist people sort of picked up on it. It's just weird that... I mean, I, all, all I was saying is I wouldn't want one. If you don't know how to... If it's a new creature, you don't know what, what makes it happy. <laughs> when you get a kitten... You go, stroke its head, loves it, right? And you can do that knowing that it's liking it. <laughs> if I had a little seashell and you go, does it sit in water? I don't know. <laughs> do you know what I mean? You could end up doing more damage. So that's why I wouldn't want it. It's nice to have rules, and it? It's nice to know what you're doing with something. Well, as you write in the diary, it's like if an alien landed and wanted to live oh. with you. Oh, <laughs> as much fun as it might sound, it wouldn't be long before you got annoyed with it because <laughs> it wouldn't eat the food you gave it. That's what I'm saying, but I couldn't have a go at it because it might not like pasta. <laughs> it might not. <laughs> Everyone likes pasta. Well, that's it for another week. I hope you've enjoyed this half hour of drivel. I mean... Some of the most stupid things ever said. I mean, it's like he's got a contempt now for the world. Like yeah. He doesn't care what comes out of his head. Learn can be frustrating, <laughs> can't it? You know, you, you, maybe I'm getting you thinking, maybe on your way home today you'll be going, yeah, octopus with two heads. And, and if you do that for five seconds, I've done my job. Good to have a job, innit? So, uh, from me, Vicky Gervais, goodbye. From Steve Merchant. Goodbye. And from Carl Pilkington. Right. This is Audible.
Hello and welcome to uh, number four in the series of six, season three of the Ricky Gervais Show, with me, Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merchant. Hello. And Carl Pilkington. All right. Uh, yeah, first of all, I'm sorry to do this, but me and Steve have got to bring something up that's been bugging us for a couple of weeks now, but it's, it's reached... A bit. You are so fucking lazy, Carl, at the moment. You have time off... Right, you go away every weekend, so me and Steve are so precious with uh, you know, so many things to do, with extras and books coming out and stuff. You, we, I, I've never heard anyone whinge about going in with kidney stones. I know loads of people that had kidney stones. Not like They've mine. had the, yeah, yeah, no, no, you say not like that because uh, they have. They've had the operation. I know people that had their appendix out, right, an actual under the knife operation, yeah. and he was back at work the next day, and he had a bit of a, a sore side. But you have whinged now for weeks and weeks. Everything you say, oh, I've had this, uh, oh, I've got to go in again. But you're still well enough to go away every weekend to see your folks or your in-laws yeah, well, or, this or is... holiday. And, 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 and it's just like, we are so... You know, you know, sometimes you've got to pull together, mate. Yeah, but what I'm saying is, you say keep a diary, mm. and you said make sure you do a diary for a year. Yeah. If I didn't go and visit people and travel the world, what would I do in it? Carl, I read your diary every week. All you seem to do is spend time in a cafe, having a cup of tea and a bit of breakfast. This is who are you, who are you constantly visiting? Anyway, let's not argue. You don't even people like your family, I thought. It's not my family, is it? Well, you, don't, family. you don't but like anyone. Why are you visiting? But you say I'm working that weekend. I'm working that weekend. We have to put. Say, I work. Let's put this in first. No, you know, no, it's no. a busy Fam time. Family's important, isn't it? Yeah. You can't keep messing people around. But this about. is all you have to do. No, what no, else are you doing? doing? What is other it? job have you got? Loads you of know. stuff. I don't want to go into what I'm doing, but I've got loads but of stuff. But all I hear is you're well, always having meetings. I know. You're always going for meetings. I don't know what that means. Meetings. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, no, seriously though. So you've been on your travels. You've got. You know, you've got lots to talk about, so... Yeah, I've got to go know. in hospital again as well, haven't I, so... What's your current state with your old... Oh, well, I don't want to go on about it. Well, no, I mean, you you know, you've brought it up. It's... You're fine, you're well enough to go away, you're well enough to go on holiday, you're well enough to visit people, you went on a train, you went to Manchester, you must be well enough, so you're well enough to do this. I went back to, uh, Bristol at the weekend, I had a bit of time off, as you right. know, because Carl couldn't do the work. So I know. That's, that's what I mean, yeah. so we all had a lot no, well, no, I didn't. I, I, I went to Bristol when I was working. Mm. That's all right. But well, exactly. he's still visiting a place, is what I'm saying. Well, well that's a ridiculous thing to say. That's like saying a pilot doesn't work, because he's visiting a place. No, because he doesn't visit it. He no, you sit down plane. on your ass. Sometimes you hire a car, so you can't be reading or, or studying. You're driving for six hours. Uh -huh. I, I went there working. We went to America, we were working. I went to Bristol, I was working. Oh, shut up. Ooh. Do you know what I mean? Getting a bit uppity. The truth hurts, Stephen. <laughs> the truth does hurt, and it's interesting that yeah. he suddenly snapped at you there. I know. Because I wondered to myself, if it weren't for you, Mr Ricky Gervais, what would this man, this little round-headed man, be doing right now? Fuck all, Stephen. Fuck all. Yeah, I went back to Bristol at the weekend, and I'd, as we know, we all had a bit of time off. And, um... Uh, actually, I was quite annoyed because I, uh, I passed the pub near where my parents live, and they had a band on. You know, pubs sometimes have a band on. And the name of the band, I'm disappointed that I missed them. The name of the band, Rick, was <laughs> Loose Change. <laughs> but what I like about Loose Change is it's the least evocative name for a band, isn't it? It's, it's not amazing. sexy, it's nothing. It's got no kind of mood or feel to it at all. Loose, Loose Change. change. It's, it's just, it's... Uh, welcome. Rough outline. <laughs> yeah. It, it's just nothing. The checkbook stubs. <laughs> <laughs> Pocket fluff. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, um, but while I was at my parents' house, they, they often, uh, you know, they keep clippings of things, you know, if, if we've been mentioned in the papers, they like to keep a record of them and stuff, because, uh, I like to show it to my grandparents, you know, and keep, a, you know, keep, keep fully abreast of things. And, uh, they, I... D you know, I managed to find a couple of them. This is what I don't know if you've heard this, Carl. It's, for people who don't realise, Carl was making a couple of little three-minute TV projects recently that were on Channel Four, and in the Sunday Times, they uh, someone's written a letter about Carl to the Sunday Times. Wow! Uh, they can send in comments and views on things they've seen, read, heard. Oh, excellent! And this is what it, someone wrote to the uh, Sunday Times: oh. Who is Carl Pilkington? <laughs> And why have I just wasted five minutes of my life listening to some of his cretinous thoughts on Channel 4? <laughs> he asked, why are there so many dinosaurs on display in museums? Quotes, couldn't they just choose the best one and just show that? He summed it all up by deciding that we know too much. Somebody clearly doesn't know enough to know that this is a complete waste of airtime showing no wit, intellect or creativity. That's from Wendy Robinson in Berkshire. You can't have your critics. You know what I mean? You've got to have your critics. Of course you have. If everybody liked what you did, 
Then you're not doing the right thing. <laughs> I've literally wasted five minutes, and they were three-minute wonders, so it must have felt <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> two-thirds as long again. But think how angry she must have been to have bothered writing this letter to the Sunday yeah. Times. Well, that's good. I mean, you really must some, have. It's all about getting people thinking. That's what I always say to you. As long as I'm getting people thinking about what I've said, she remembered what I said. But what what views did you put out in these short films, which you feel people perhaps should be talking about, discussing, digesting, thinking about? Uh, just stuff that was in my head that day when I was filming them. Yeah. Is it in your head now? Uh, some of it is. <laughs> re- now you've remembered me what I said. Now you what? Now you've sort of told me what I said in that one. Yeah, I remember saying that. Yeah. And I, st- and I stick by it. Remember him some other stuff? Yeah. I'll tell you now, right? This, uh, yeah, if, I don't know if Wendy's, you know, listened to this. But, Almost certainly not. But listen, right? <laughs> I was saying about the the uh, museums, right, and how they're big and everything. And they've Brilliant. got dinosaurs all over the shop. I read right. mm. that in, the, in that museum, they've got something like... Uh, seven million bits of stuff in there right now when i spend two hours in somewhere just show me the good stuff don't be saying we've got seven million bits because there was a fella a fella who opened it right i did a bit of research on the museum fella who opened the museum up uh what was his name it doesn't matter okay doesn't matter does it what museum was it it was the london one Oh, the London one, yeah. Okay. So he's in there and he's he's collecting all this, you know, bits of stuff. What stuff? Just whatever's knocking about at that oh, time. Right, okay. he just, it seemed like you he have never, researched it. He never chucked anything away. He's oh. like, oh, I won't put it in the bin. Pop it on the shelf. Okay, right? so yeah. So he's put everything on a shelf oh, in the right, museum. Yeah. Then as time. Well, I think you're on, going into too much detail, but just give us the gist of it. No, but all I'm saying is, uh, he keeps everything, and if you keep everything, sometimes it'll be good stuff, right? Um, and a lot of the stuff was going missing. The good stuff. But people who set these museums up are just as crafty. <laughs> what? The fellow who found Tutankhamen, he was pocketing all sorts of fingers and stuff in his pockets on the way out. <laughs> that had rings on them and stuff. So all I'm saying is, why is she having a go? But she's hang on, wait, no, I, what's that got to do with someone pocketing? I don't understand your because, point. Because she's sort of moaning at me going, don't have a go at the museum and the dinosaurs. But no, she, but she's having a go at your fatuous you're, point. Yeah, you're absolutely uneducated, but, stupid I mean, I, point I, that you got, you got TV time to talk absolute shit, if I could uh, that's not paraphrase fault, Wendy. That's not my fault. If someone says, do you want me to do a little programme and you can do what I want, I went and did what I did. But, Free speech, But it? we just gave you the chance then to defend yourself, and you just confirmed Wendy's point a thousand times over. What was all this waffle about people nicking stuff? What's that got to do with anything? Because she's having a go at me. I didn't nick But anything. she's having a go at you for talking uh, uh, nonsense uh, that's of no consequence, which is what you just did that's then. That's all nonsense. But what was your point? Oh, all right, then well, we'll watch Wendy's little programme when that goes out. Let's <laughs> see what she's got to talk about. Sick of her. So anyway, as I say, my mother saves various clippings and things which may be of interest. This was recently in the uh, Daily Mail, in one of those kind of uh, gossip columns. Uh, Ricky Gervais's cringeworthy dance routine as managerial buffoon David Bren was undoubtedly the highlight of BBC comedy The Office. Perhaps credit for the scene should not go to Gervais, however, but his lanky co-writer Stephen Merchant. <laughs> for I hear that six-foot-seven-inch Merchant has been attracting a great deal of female attention at the so-and-so pub in North London... Uh, until he took to the dance floor with Brent-esque results. Says my mole, most of the feminine throng looked away in embarrassment. Putting it kindly, he was rather ungainly, like a giant albatross hopping on stilts. <laughs> right, now then. I'll take issue with this, because firstly... You wouldn't be attracting female attention in the first place. Rick, if I had been, I'd have phoned the mail myself. <laughs> Point A... Right, I seem to remember distinctly I was talking to one of my mates the whole night and we were discussing about the fact we were too shy to talk to girls. <laughs> so wrong there. Yeah. Point two, as you well know, if I take to the dance floor, which on this occasion I didn't, I remember distinctly not because I love to dance, I would not have been described as a giant albatross hopping on stilts because Carl has seen me dance, you've seen me dance, you know I'm a good mover. Yeah. I, just in the same way that people can't quite understand how Peter Crouch, the same height as me, yeah. is able to be so brilliant on the football field. Yeah. The same people look at me when I'm dancing, they go, I don't know how that big guy is able to bust some of those kind of moves. Yeah, yeah, yeah I've yeah. won two dance contests in my life. 
Those, yeah. those facts, those stats speak for themselves, Rick. I know, I know. I mean, you've seen me dancing. How would you describe me? It, uh, I, I, I think that you look like a... Isn't an albatross, isn't it? You look like um, an upright lizard, right, give, having being given electroshock treatment. And I think that's a lot fairer, isn't it, than the albatross nonsense? Well, I... Mm. So I'm just trying to picture that, because again, I, I, was that a compliment? You were on my side, right? You were defending Yeah, it, 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 a cross between a giant lizard and a, 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 a stick insect. Again, because they don't sound, in, 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 straight away, they don't sound like compliments, but I'm assuming oh, you're on okay. my side here. Uh, a stick insect with funny glasses? Is that? For my, again, I, yeah. I just, I thought, hmm, I was thinking you would perhaps be a bit touch more supportive, but these, you've not really, Carl, you've seen me dance, what, what, what are your views? Uh, it's just like a bit of weird art. <laughs> That's brilliant! That is brilliant! That's so much better than albatross! <laughs> I wouldn't have said an albatross. I was looking at one of them the other day. And I don't understand what they mean by that. Because they're dying out. They say, you know, uh, <laughs> they dive in the sea. Oh, it's gone. Yeah. Something happened in the brain. It went from the point we were making, via an albatross, then it just shot off. It just ping like a pinball. Well, let's hear because it's going to be another good point. No, it's just saying how, um, because I've, I've never seen one, and they were saying, how would you feel if, if you never saw one again? And I was like, you know, I've got by this long without it. It's not bothered me. <laughs> but, um, but it was, point. it was just sort of saying, uh, <laughs> what they do is they dive in the sea, sort of put their head under the water, see if there's any fish knocking about, grab one, get out again, right? Yeah. Go to land. I don't know if they're designed to do that. Well, obviously they are. No, because seagulls are, because you see them floating about. Now, what's happening is they're doing that, but getting caught in nets. Well, that's it. The net shouldn't be there. That's the point. They're totally adapted to their environment, but we came along millions and millions of years afterwards and stitched them up. It's not like people are going, well, the nets are always there. How did they evolve without getting caught in the net? We invented the net. We've only been knocking around for a few hundred thousand yeah. years. But what I'm saying is it's that thing about animals learn by mistakes by other animals. You know, like the monkeys uh, peeling potatoes. Right. <laughs> That's never happened. They go and put nuts in the salt water to, to salt the nut. Whatever. How does that how does that get to peeling potatoes? But, uh, because in your head they were working in a canteen. Making chips. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely, yeah. It yeah. doesn't matter what the food is. I'm just saying how they know how to sort of prepare. I that love food. the fact that you don't care what the fact is. When you're discussing facts, that's all that matters. Otherwise, on Mastermind, they just go, um, uh, who wrote Much Ado About Nothing? Dickens? Yeah, close enough, whatever, someone did. It, the fact is the, what matters. Yeah, but with that question, that's got a straightforward answer. What I'm telling you is the way that animals work. If it's a potato or a nut, it's a foodage. <laughs> and once again, I return you to my question as before. What's your point? What were you? What point were you making? I'm just saying an albatross will find. F if you're hungry, you find food or you change your diet. If you don't <laughs> eat something else, you die out. Simple. Said before. If you want a pie, but they haven't got any pies, you have a pasty. Alter your diet. Mm. And an albatross. Drastically. <laughs> yeah. yeah it's oh, radical. radical. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Completely change my diet. No more pies. <laughs> what are you eating? Pasty. Brilliant. <laughs> uh, I'm not going to eat quiche anymore. I'm going to have a tartlet. But you, you're getting more and more sort of single-minded in your... No, single-celled. Yeah. It's not, though. In your belief that everything you say has got some kind of profound implication and that, and that no one else is listening, that we're all ignorant, all right. we're all not it, listening to what you're saying. Here's another one. Go on. Here's something else Oh, come on. This would be good. In series This would be as good as E equals MC squared. The, uh, the people aging backwards idea. Well, it's not an idea. They've done something on it, saying how... No, they haven't. A baby has been messing about with emails. <laughs> right? Right. Oh, yeah, God! A 65-year-old doesn't know how to use email. So, again, my system works. Uh, so, say if you're an old person, you're, you're not using the internet, but you shouldn't be anyway, because you should be sort of just getting used to life as an old person. When you're a baby and you're about to die, they're using the internet. I don't know what you mean, when you're a baby and you're about to die. 
This is if, this it, is if this was your world. Idea, if it was yeah. your world. Well, let me just ask a couple Sorry, of questions. Sorry, that makes no sense at all. What you just uh, that makes no I'm sense just at all. That my theory. You may as well have hit a wock. What to saying? express that point, because they're... <laughs> yeah. I, the pong... Yeah. That would have made more sense. <laughs> See, this it is why, more profound. This is why more resonant. This is why Wendy's having a go, though. Because you're not being open-minded. You're not thinking about... But we're being open-minded to good ideas, to sensible thought, to intellectual considerations. We're not being open-minded to this utter drivel. Yeah, but every invention is a bit... Who'd have thought the Frisbee would have caught on? <laughs> I don't think that can count as an invention, though. Of course it is. People are paying for it. Someone said, I'm going to invent something. But you can people chuck are paying out. for carrots. But they're not an invention. Because you pay for something, it doesn't mean it's an invention. No, but a man made thing. A frisbee. It didn't grow off a tree, did it? Someone's made that and gone, I can sell this. And people are buying it. <laughs> you know, all I'm saying is things, things change, don't they? You know, the albatross is dying out. The way. Uh, like, when I walked into the flat, right, we've had hot weather, haven't we? We've had a lot of flies knocking about. Now, when I was younger, I never saw flies sort of hanging about in, in gangs. <laughs> Whereas... <laughs> I don't know what world this is! Would they have little motorbikes? No, you know, just, uh, you'd sort of see one, one would get in the house, you know, my dad would kill it or whatever, but you'd never see three. You wouldn't be going, oh, which one am I going to get first and everything. They'd, they'd come in, they'd exit out of a window or whatever. Whereas I walked in on, on a bit of activity. <laughs> There's nothing to eat here. Right? <laughs> Three flies in the flat, right? All sort of whizzing around. Right. All together, right? So I just sort of think, oh, you know, let them be. Uh, they seem to be happy. Uh, you know, they, they're playing around with each other, right? Sat down, reading the paper, look up, right? It was like the, the one was trying to, like, have it away with, with one of the flies, and the other one was was having a go as well. It, it turned out it was a little fly that didn't want any of the action, but two were attacking it. How could you possibly gauge that? Just by watching. That's how you learn, isn't it? You watch, you, you watch. But no, this is conjecture again. You had no idea what was going on there. No, I did. It, it's, it's, it's the way they were sort of jumping on it and stuff, and I was like, oh, I'm not happy with this going on, and, you know, under my roof sort of thing. <laughs> My um, house, my rules. But it's, but it's a nightmare because it's small. You can't control it. You don't know which one's which. You might end up sort of pushing out one that's the bad. What are you talking out... about? I'm just saying. Why no, are you getting involved? Just because creatures are changing all the time. What are you talking about? What point are you making? I'm just saying the way that flies used to be happy go lucky <laughs> on their own. The sun's out. Have a fly about. <laughs> Whereas nowadays, oh, now, oh, there was like little attacks going on. <laughs> oh God! Oh God! Away! But how could you tell which were the two aggressors and which was the victim? How well, could this, you distinguish? This, this was this was the problem. I mean, all I was looking at was which one they kept attacking, and I was thinking if I can get that one in the bedroom and then get the other Sorry. two out the window. What are you? Th just breaking it up. Because uh, what sort of a person would it be to let that go on? <laughs> I don't know what he's talking about. He has no feelings for anything. He doesn't care if whole species die out. That's, Why are you getting involved? You're wrong. That's where you're wrong, because I think I think more than most people. I think there's a lot of people who just go through the motions. Yeah. They do it's the been... same thing every day. They can do a job, but that's all they stick to. They don't think about what them flies do. Carl, What's that I've known doing? you for, I don't know, four years. And all you ever say is things like, why do we have jellyfish? No, I haven't mentioned the jellyfish today. But it's the same old shit. You look at someone, you make up your own story, and then your conclusion annoys you, even though it's totally fatuous. Like I say, the man with the frisbee, what happens if, if he had a mate who said, rubbish that, he wouldn't have done it? I love the fact that you think the frisbee is the pinnacle of invention. Yeah. I think it's amazing. No, it's an example of something that, you know, if he was on some programme where you, you know, you said, I've invented this, they'd go, get out. They wouldn't have, they wouldn't give him time of day to say, right, I've made this thing, it's out of plastic, you throw it about, what, what for? Well, you just chuck it about on the beach. What's the point? It was a bit of fun, innit? No, I don't like it. How okay, many that was an argument with himself. <laughs> No, but do you know what I mean? It's a popular little thing, and I'm just saying it's easy to put ideas down. But you've never even come up with an idea as good as the Frisbee, and that's saying something. I came up with a clippable mat that goes what? on a cup, and it's a, it's a good little thing. I haven't followed it through yet. A what? A clippable mat. 
What's a clippable mat? What a clippable does that mat that like you stick on a cup, so you, you can put your cup down on a table without having to go, oh, where's that mat? It's, it's clipped to the cup all the time. And you put the cup down wherever you want because it's got a mat on it. I think I've seen that. But why does it have to be on? clipped? To no, the, why can't it just be built into the cup? Because, uh so it clips onto, you've got our special cups, it doesn't yeah. clip onto every cup. No, but just the same way that every sauce is different. You don't say, oh, I'm sick of this sauce, it doesn't fit a mug. You, you use the sauce of that, I mean, I don't use sauces. You just don't buy that but sort of But isn't a sauce of what you're talking about? Uh, kind of, yeah, but it's clippable. But why is the clipper, why is the clippability so important to you? So you don't have to keep finding the, the, the mat when you put the cup down, it's constantly clipped to the mat. But why cup. does it have to be clippable? Because that suggests it's removable. Why not just have something where it's constantly attached? What's to stop you from losing that in much the same way as you lose the coasters? Do we need this, this? Do we need a well, clippable coaster? But let's just let's ask him like it's the Dragon's Den. Let's okay, ask him yeah. now. What? We've got money to invest yeah. on your clippable right. cup. What's now pitch problem? this idea to us. Tell How would you sell this well, idea you, to you us? You just said, uh, what was your question then? Brilliant. So you're not listening. Let's start no, again. I am. Okay. I, I no, just... imagine you walked in. You what just is it for? In. What is it for? Is it is it is it a coaster to stop uh, the heat from the cup burning the varnish? Rick, let him explain. Or let's... is it a saucer to stop um, well, look spills? Let's it let's let's have you pitch this idea to us. Just you've you've never met us before. You were investors. Tell us. Explain this to us. Sell it to us. Right. Um, we're living in a world uh, where furniture is important to people. They spend a lot of money on it, don't they, furniture? Yeah, There's absolutely. so many furniture shops out there. Yeah. All different types of wood from all over the world. Absolutely, yeah. Right? Good if something's point. come from the Amazon, mm. you don't want a coffee stain on it. No, you don't, know. Right. But we're living in a world as well mm. where people don't use saucers. What when, do you mean when, they you out, when you go out and buy, because people... What don't... do you mean we're living in a world where they don't use saucers? Yeah, there's loads of saucers, yeah. Because I know people who buy cups singly. Right. Because there's only two people living in a flat, so you don't buy a big box. Because in a big box of, of like plates and that, you get things like, uh, you know, so, uh, what's what's the plate that's above a saucer but below a plate? <laughs> I never, I... <laughs> the plate that's above a saucer but below a plate. <laughs> so it's a plate, but it's below a plate. But it's a size that you sort of go, what am I doing with this? <laughs> So, uh, what would it be? A, a side plate? Uh, maybe. But a plate yeah. that you'd have alongside your regular dinner plate, right? Maybe. You put a bread roll on or something in a restaurant. Maybe. Yeah, okay. But, but you What's your point? That. What's no, your point? Like, a... This is fascinating to me. Because this what? is his best attempt now okay. to try and attract investment. Do you know where the, your mats are at home? I haven't got mats. Don't use them. Why not? Because uh, it, it doesn't bother me. I, I haven't got any highly polished um, uh, furniture from the Amazon. Right, Steve, have you got any sort of... I've got some coasters and I use the coasters. And do you know where they are when you need one? Well, yes, because they're always at the place where I would normally put down a mug of hot tea, i.e. Yeah. on a table or a coffee table. Right, now, do I you keep, find... If, if I had a, a highly polished table from the Amazon, I'd keep my coasters on it. Yeah, but what I'm saying now is, what happens if you get up with your cup of tea, you're a busy man, right? This yeah. is what I'm saying, we're living in a world where people are busier than Yeah, ever. go on, go on. Not everybody can sit down and enjoy a cup of tea sat in the same place. Right. You get up and you might move into another room. Uh, well, you haven't, got a, you haven't got a polished table in there from the Amazon, so it doesn't No, but you might be working on another expensive table. I'll find we'll have a coaster there as well. That has a computer on. My question is this. One, does it fit all mugs? Uh, or do no. I have to buy a special mug to have this special Well, we can, we can work it whatever way you want. We can either look at the standard size mug and say, let's appeal to everyone, or we can... Get in, in touch with some mug company. How is it clipped? Just like little plastic clips that clip onto it. Yeah. And then you clip it off and you and you clean it. They're dishwasher proof, by the way. I, yeah, I I don't, I, no, but, they don't need that but at all. Why, why can't you just make a mug that has something mm, built, built in, in the base of the mug to prevent it from making the mark? No, I don't It's only that. the heat that makes the mark, isn't it, really? I, I, I just want to say now, it's a pointless idea um, and I'm out. Right, but... What about the idea that you've just suggested then, with the mug, with the saucer built in? Yeah. What about will we will we do that together? But that's not that's not your idea. That's my idea. Yeah, but without my idea, you wouldn't have had that. Well, but that's absurd. We're having a conversation. I've come up with an idea. Now I've got the money. Do you, do I've want, got the money, and want, I'm going to go off with that idea. Yeah, you haven't painted it anyway, and it's a rubbish idea, and you couldn't. It's paint. not rubbish because I've just thought as well that'll be good for putting biscuits on the side as well. <laughs>
Okay, no, that means going... we can get rid of that plate that I don't know. By the way, is. now this is broadcast, you can never patent this idea because it's out in public domain. Rick, 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 why don't we see if there's anyone out there who's willing to invest in this idea? Are you a mug manufacturer? Are you a mug designer? Are you someone who's got any interest whatsoever in this idea? Do you think it's a saleable idea? And, more importantly, would it be not great to have a picture of Carl's face on the map? Because it's perfectly round. Perfectly round. As well, and it, you'd scold him every time yeah. you, uh, yeah. So there'd be a certain satisfaction in that. Yeah, well, if Peter Jones is listening, or that Ballantine fella, or, uh, what's his name? Any uh, of the, uh, big uh, investors on that show, or indeed yeah. any investors anywhere podcast at rickygervais.com. Get in touch. Tell us how, how we can move forward with this brilliant new idea. Hmm? Pathetic. Oh, Chip, after that, he's gone and written down the little... <laughs> the jingle that signifies another reading from Carl Pilkington's diary. Got up and put the radio on. I listened to the story that the vicar read on Radio 2. Yeah, that could be good. He was saying how Jesus was 33 when he, when he died. He said he was more into the idea of doing a lot in your life than living for ages. This was linked to the news about the doctor who's come up with some stuff that he's been injecting himself and his wife with that makes you age better. I looked it up on the internet. It wasn't worth them doing it because they are already old looking. I don't know why people want to stay looking young. You can wear a bald head better if you're old because hairs are replaced by wrinkles. That's drivel. No, it's, it's not drivel. A pointless, it's just a pointless entry to a diary. That it's not because that could be a, a, a like an important bit in like world history. What the fact that that people that someone's trying to make people not age. Age is good, isn't it? When you see an old person, it's been going forever. Was people trying to age better? No, but he's talking about if you're ninety, he wants people to look like they're thirty, and that's not good because how, how would the world run when that's going on? Well, I agree. But you know, it's, when people, again, it's not a revelation. If I if if I like chatting to old people, because they know a lot of stuff. So if I'm sat on a train, and someone's old, I'm happier talking to them about. They get up and move after about ten well, minutes. Well, no, you know, the fact that many of them are infirm and can. <laughs> yeah, they, <laughs> they have to stay there and listen to this but, one. But yeah, even that, even that means that they're getting more out of life in a way because they don't move about as much, so they have more thinking time. It is weird how that happens to you as you get closer to death. Jesus. You know, you're not working as much because you're resting and you can think back about your life and you can think, oh, I had a good one. Actually, it's not been that bad. Whereas if... But you must have started that now because you've been doing nothing for the past three months. Yeah, but I'm just... Well, that's, like I'm saying, it is a good thing for you to do to sort of think about what you've been doing with your days and your weeks. And, and how stuff. do you assess your life so far? With all this spare time you've had on your hands and moping around and moaning about your illness and just sitting around, right? You've been uh, introspecting, have you? Yeah. Go on then. What have you come up with? I haven't come up with anything. I'm just, uh, I'm, I'm just, you know, I have, I have an all right life, and things are changing. Oh, keep saying that. No, but, they, but you don't know how much they are changing to the point of, I don't know if I mentioned the squirrel eating Mars bars, but from that, <laughs> from, from, from that happening to monkeys opening bottles with lids on them, to, it's just, it's, it's mental out there. It's madness what is going on. And all I'm saying is old people need to be old people. You need oldness. You need to see old people. You need to go, right, they might have a solution. They've been on the earth longer. Quick, we need an answer. How old are you? I'm 32. Well, you look 78. <laughs> I don't know what you're saying! I don't know who that conversation was with, why you got angry, and I think you made the opposite point that you were making yeah. at the beginning. If you say you're 32, you look 78. No, you were saying about it would be a problem if you were 78 and looked 32. Well, I don't know what you're saying. You came down the wrong side then. Either. You did that whole thing and you bollocksed it up again in your brain. I'm just saying, either way, you need to have people who look old. Otherwise, who's in charge? <laughs> I don't know what you mean. Right. So you say, even if... So you're saying it'd be all right to make 78-year-olds look 32 as long as there were some 32-year-olds that look 78, as long as you've got old-looking people. No, but say... Can like, I tear this page out? Because <laughs> it's worthless. What I mean is, when I went to the doctors, oh. I saw the specialist, right, mm. about the kidney stones. I was, I was asking him all the straight questions. Go on. Is it life-threatening? No. Uh, you know, how long am I going to be out? Couple all the rest of days. Of it, right? Now... He As it turned out, it is life-threatening, and you've been out for three months whinging about the fucking thing. Strange. Now, he was quite old. He looked about 55, and that reassured me in a way. In a way, it didn't, because he's, he's one of them doctors who didn't open his eyes much, and I kind of thought, I hope you open them I don't know what you're wider. talking about. What do you mean? 
What? What do you mean he didn't open his eyes much? One of those sort of doctors who's either that overworked that he's, he, he does that, you know, when he's like, he's tired, so he's going, right, what we're going to do is, and he's doing that with his eyes shut, he's talking well, this is, like that. this is radio. I know, but I'm telling you, so you can see. But people are meant to be listening to this. But if they can't imagine me with my eyes shut. Well, tell them you've got your eyes shut. Just right, say yeah. he had his eyes shut. Yeah, he had his eyes shut. Oh. Had he been reading this? No. <laughs> Bored stupid, I imagine. He's just trying to get a... Oh. Well, do, do you know what I mean? I, or, I don't know if it's because he's tired or if he's that educated that some people know so much you don't even have to look at it. <laughs> you don't know what you're talking about! Intelligent people! Who is so educated that they don't need to open their eyes? Well, you see it, you see <laughs> like... <laughs> that? Uh, who's that bloke up there? Is he blind? No, he's been reading too much. <laughs> He no. doesn't open his eyes anymore, doesn't no. he? No. Old, old people who you see wearing tweed and what have you, and they're really posh and they talk, and whenever they talk, their eyes are shut and they I open... don't know what this observation is. I don't understand why you've never seen that. I have never seen an old, educated man wearing tweed who doesn't bother opening his fucking eyes. Steve, I don't you? know what you're talking about. But Steve, have you seen... Do you know what I mean when people don't sort of open their eyes when they're not talking to you? And it can be quite annoying, because it's like they're saying, I'm not interested about you sat there, I'm not bothered if you're listening, or I'm saying what I'm saying because I say what I say. But he's, be if, he, if he has got his eyes closed, he's probably just trying to absorb what you're saying and, and think carefully yeah, about probably. it, so anyway, he doesn't misdiagnose I'm not, you. I'm not having a go at him. Well, I'm like just saying what? he was 50-odd, and I was happy that he was there telling me... <laughs> I don't know why you were watching his eyes when he was telling you about your insides. Because you can tell a lot by people's eyes. That's what I said about jellyfish. But, you know, just lines in a face tell a few stories, and I don't think we should get rid of them lines. Brilliant. Wise words. Well, that's the end of uh, show number four in this third series of the Ricky Gervais Show. So it's goodbye from me, Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merchant. Goodbye. And of course, Carl Pilkington. Bye. Right.